triangles. A median is a segment from the vertex, so a corner, to the midpoint of the other side. The midpoint of the other side would break this segment up into equal parts, being that this side of the segment is the same length as this side. This line isn't perpendicular unless it was like a, an isosceles triangle, um, but it doesn't tell us that. So, yeah. Then centroid is where the three medians would intersect. I'm not going to crowd this picture, but if there was three of these going across where it intersects is a centroid, and we're going to look at the proportional relationship there. Then the next word is altitude of a triangle. Altitude of a triangle is something you've actually seen a lot because you use the altitude to find area of a triangle. So the altitude is a perpendicular line segment um, that connects a vertex to the other side. And then if you had three altitudes, they would intersect at something called the orthocenter. Okay, on the back of this page, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so we have one theorem we're going to go over. It's called the centroid theorem. Um, the centroid is that intersection point between the medians. So here you have a median that goes from a vertex to the midpoint of the other side, and it breaks the segment up into equal parts. And then you have a median here that goes from point C to D, and it breaks this side up into equal parts. And then from B to the midpoint on the other side, breaks this segment up into equal parts like this. Okay, and then what happens when you have this situation? I'm going to use pencil now because I'm going to erase kind of as I go. Okay, so what happens is this segment right here, as you can see, like, this is the centroid here. This part of the segment is not the same length as this part of the segment, this one's shorter than this side, um, but there is a proportional relationship, and the proportional relationship is like one part to two. So this is half of the length of this over here. We're going to look at this with like actual numbers. So I wrote in pencil because I'm actually going to erase this, but it's like one to two ratio. Um, so let's say that segment AE was 15. So let's say this whole segment right here was 15 units. And then you were asked to find each part of the segment. Um, it's in a 1 to 2 ratio, so there's three parts total. So you could do 15 divided by 3 to get 5. And that's going to be your short side. And then this longer side will be double that 5. So it would be 10. So the longer part is 10, the short side is half of that, which is 5. And then 10 plus 5 is 15, which is the length of the whole segment. And we'll practice this on the practice page. So then turn your page to 6.3, practice problems. Okay, so point P is the centroid of triangle LMN. Find PN and QP. So centroid is where the medians intersect and it says find PN and QP for everything so we're going to do PN equals QP equals and I'm going to do this for all of them Okay, so it says that QN is 9. So QN right here is a total of 9 units long. And as for PN and QP, like the two parts of that segment, so what I'm going to do is 9 divided by 3, which equals 3, so that would be like one part, the shorter side. And then this longer side is double that, so 6. So QP is 3 and PN is 6. Okay, and then same over here, QN says QN is 21. 
So I'm going to take 21 divided by 3 to get what one part would be, which is 7. So the shorter segment is 7 units long. And then the longer one is double that, which is 14. So PQ is 7 and PN is 14. Continuing, same process now. QN right here, it says QN is 30 units long. So we're going to take 30 divided by 3 to get 10. So our shorter segment is 10. And then the longer one is double that, which is 20. So QP is 10 and PN is 20. QN. Okay, so QN is 42 units long. So if I take 42 divided by 3, it comes out to 14. So the shorter side would be 14. And then the longer part would be double that, which is 28. So PN is 28 and QP is 14. Okay, then the next section, same idea, just like a slightly different setup. So in the next portion it says point D is the centroid of the triangle, find CD and CE. So for each of these, CD and CE, and I'll just set it up so it makes it easy. Okay, so for this one it says that DE is 5. So DE right here is 5. And then it wants to know the length of CD, which is the longer part of the segment. And then it also wants to know CE, which is like the whole thing. So CD is the longer part of the segment, which would be double the 5, so it would be 10. And then CE, just using segment addition, 5 plus 10 is 15. Okay, number six. Now we just repeat that process. DE is 11 right here. So DE is 11. CD right here is a longer portion of the segment. 11 times 2 is 22. And then to find the whole length, just 11 plus 22 is 33. Okay. Repeat. Oh, sorry, I didn't know that took so much. DE right here is 9. CD right here is double the 9, so 18. And then CE, the whole length would be 9 plus 18, which is 27. Number eight, same thing, DE is 15, DC is a longer portion of the segment, so we'll just double it to get 30, and then 15 plus 30 gives you the entire segment, so it would be 45. So this is pink, and this is yellow. Okay, this, of course, it builds a little bit, but same concept. Point G is a centroid of ABC. BG is 6. AF is 12. They label it for us, which is nice. And AE is 15. They don't label, label the AE. AE is this segment here, so this whole segment is 15 units. Okay, and then using that information, it wants us to find the segment lengths. So FC right here. Um, remember, each of these lines are medians, and they hit at the midpoint of the other side. So that means this side of the segment is the same length as this. So if this is 12 units, then FC would also be 12 units.
then it asks for the length of BF. Let's see where's BF. Okay, BF is this whole segment here. Um, it shows the longer part of the segment is six units. So the shorter part would be half of that, which would be three. And then to find that whole segment, it would be just six plus three is nine. And then AG right here and GE. Well, this whole thing is 15. If we do 15 divided by 3, one part would be 5. So the shorter part would be 5 units. And then the longer part will be double that, which is 10. So AG would be 10 and GE is 5. Okay, on the, we're actually not going to do this page, but there's one more thing that I want to show you before we're done. Um, so over back to the beginning. You don't have to write anything, so you can just look up here. Um, another way that this is described or taught is using fractions. So if you consider this like the three parts, this would be one third and two thirds part over here. Um, I don't usually use fractions because students generally don't like them. Um, but if there is questions where that would help you, like this is one third and this is two thirds, so you could use that to figure out different lengths as well. Um, the other thing that comes up on the homework, it does ask about um, where the altitudes of a triangle intersect. They intersect at the ortho center. The reason why this wasn't part of the math part is because it doesn't have like a proportional relationship like the other ones do. But the altitudes do intersect at the ortho center if that comes up in your questions. Okay, so for the rest of the class, you have to do your 